On 5 December 2012, the High Court of Australia handed down its decision in the case of the Commissioner of Taxation versus Consolidated Media Holdings Limited. The case concerned the taxation implications of an off-market share buyback. The matter was originally heard before a single judge of the Federal Court who found in favour of the Commissioner. The taxpayer appealed to the full Federal Court. This court unanimously held in favour of the taxpayer. The Commissioner appealed to the High Court against that decision. Here is what happened. Consolidated Media Holdings held all of the share capital in Crown Limited. In late June 2002, Crown Limited bought back from its shareholder just over 840 million shares for a purchase price of $1 billion. The entries in the books of Crown were made on 28 June 2002, but the share buyback agreement was completed on 6 August 2002. The accounting entries in the books of Crown were fundamental to the source of the dispute. Crown created a new account labelled Share Buyback Reserve Account. On 28 June 2002, Crown debited the Share Buyback Reserve Account in the amount of $1 billion and credited the intercompany loan account with Consolidated Media Holdings in the amount of $1 billion. It is important to understand that no entries were made to the shareholder's equity account. The shareholder's equity account retained a constant credit balance. Crown's audited financial statements for the year ended 30 June 2002 showed a reduction in contributed equity of $1 billion. I will now discuss the tax implications of this transaction. Following amendments to the Corporations Act some years ago, companies were permitted to buy back their own shares from the company's shareholders. The tax law had to be amended to cater for this change in the Corporations Act. Broadly, in an off-market share buyback, the difference between the purchase price and any part of the purchase price which is debited against a company's share capital account is taken to be a dividend paid by the company to the shareholder. For example, if a company purchases shares from its shareholders for $1 million and $200,000 is debited to the share capital account as part of that transaction, $800,000 is treated as a dividend for tax purposes. The $200,000 amount is effectively the consideration for capital gains purposes. Consolidated Media Holdings was the taxpayer in this case. It wanted the $1 billion purchase price to be treated as a dividend because, under the law at that time, it would receive a rebate of tax under Section 46 of the 1936 Tax Act. The issue in the case was whether the share buyback reserve account was part of the share capital account for the purposes of the tax law. Section 6D of the Tax Act then provided, among other things, that if a company had more than one share capital account as defined, all those accounts would be taken to be a single share capital account. I note that Section 6D has since been repealed. The taxpayer argued that the share buyback reserve account was not a share capital account within the meaning of the tax law. The Commissioner argued that this account was part of the share capital account. Therefore, in the Commissioner's view, the amount debited to the share buyback reserve account was a debit to the share capital account. If the Commissioner was correct, there would be no dividend, no dividend rebate, and the consideration for capital gains purposes would be $1 billion. The High Court unanimously held in favour of the Commissioner. There was a good deal of discussion in the case about the legislative history of the changes to the Corporations Act and the taxation law. However, this history did not have much bearing on the eventual decision. In the end analysis, the High Court placed emphasis on the changes under the Corporations Act. These changes replaced the previous notions of a company having accounts and accounting records with the broader and more functional notion of a company having financial statements and financial records. This caused the High Court to take a broader view of what constituted a share capital account under the changes to the tax law that followed the changes to the Corporations Act. The High Court considered that the share buyback reserve account and the share capital account of Crown together 
was a record of the financial position of the company in relation to its share capital. Accordingly, in the view of the High Court, the debit of $1 billion to the share buyback reserve account was, in effect, a debit to the share capital account. What are the practical implications of this decision? For most tax practitioners, it will be extremely unlikely that a situation like this will be experienced in practice. The lesson to be learnt is more related to dealing with the risk of transactions from a tax viewpoint. I have absolutely no doubt that the taxpayer would have taken substantial advice from major law firms, accounting firms and quite probably from senior counsel. Despite having taken this advice and despite the fact that the full federal court held unanimously in favour of the taxpayer, when the matter reached the high court, the taxpayer lost. This demonstrates how uncertain our tax law can be. When advising clients, cases like this need to be kept in mind and appropriate management of the risk taken.